My name is Audrey. I'm 30 years old. Today, I have a story to tell you guys about how I became a millionaire thanks to two greedy individuals. Let's just say that karma never fails to come for those who do wrong. The first time I met my husband, Gavin, was on a work trip hosted by our office. We were both heads of two different departments in our company and had never met before the trip. During the trip, many activities were hosted by the organizers, including games and sports. I had gotten injured during a game of volleyball and had sprained my ankle. Gavin immediately helped me and made sure to carry me to the infirmary so that I could get first aid. I thought he was very thoughtful and kind and wanted to get to know him more. I reached out to him when we returned from the trip and asked him if he would like to go on a date to grab some coffee. He immediately agreed, and we decided on a date to meet up at our local cafe. During the date, we talked about the events of the trip as well as our likes, interests, and family life. I realized quickly that Gavin and I had the same taste in sports, television shows, and even hobbies. When describing his family, Gavin mentioned that he had always been incredibly close to his mother, Meg, and liked to visit her at least twice a week. You know, I've always been incredibly close to my mother. We make it a point to see each other at least twice a week. That's sweet. I'm glad you have a good relationship with her. What about your father? Well, he left us a few years ago, and we have minimal contact. Oh, I see. Is everything all right between you two? It's complicated, Audrey. Let's just say it did not work out. What do you mean, did not work out? He's your father, not your boyfriend. Yeah, it's just, he wasn't very helpful, so my mom and I left. Not helpful in what way? Like financially or emotionally? You know what, we have a lot of other things to talk about. Could we please move on? Oh, of course. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. I just wanted to get to know you a little better. We can talk about something else. I did not think much of it and brushed it off as a sore subject for Gavin to talk about. I was sure that the closer we got, he would open up to me about his past. After that day, we met a few times over the next few weeks and even during work. I began eating my lunch with him daily. In a few months, we had become incredibly close, and things began to get serious. I knew his birthday was coming up and decided to plan a surprise party for him. I reached out to our friends to help me with the party planning and the guest list. Knowing how close Gavin was to Meg, I decided it would make sense to invite her to the party as well. I was in two minds about inviting his father, as I was still unsure about their relationship, and finally decided not to invite his father as I did not want his birthday to be ruined. And anyway, the day of the party arrived, and all the decorations were done. I left work early to set up Gavin's apartment and get the cake and food for the party. Soon the guests began pouring in, and everyone was excited for Gavin's arrival. A few minutes before Gavin was supposed to enter, I saw a middle-aged lady walking to the door. She was dressed in a fancy green evening gown and carried a branded handbag. I walked over to her and introduced myself. Hello, I'm Audrey. You must be one of Gavin's close relatives. It's nice to meet you. How do you know Gavin? Oh, finally someone was with some manners. I'm Meg, Gavin's mother, and yes, I'm the most important guest here. He's my son, you know. Of course, Meg. I didn't mean to offend. Gavin talked so fondly about you. Please come in and make yourself comfortable. Well, I should hope so. I practically raised him all by myself. I hope you've done a decent job planning this party. I put in a lot of effort, and our friends have been a great help too. I hope you enjoy it. We'll see about that. Just make sure you don't get in the way of my time with Gavin. He's my boy, after all. Oh, of course. I wouldn't want to come between you two. Gavin cherishes his relationship with you, and I respect that. However, Meg did not seem impressed by any of my gestures. 
she loudly criticized the decorations. She also began insulting the others at the party. However, I did not react to any of her actions and made sure to show her hospitality as I wanted her to approve of me. Eventually, I heard Gavin's car approaching the house and went outside to greet him. The surprise went well, and Gavin was overjoyed at the effort I had put in. We cut the cake and gave him our presents. Meg demanded to be next to Gavin in all the pictures that were taken, including those that had just Gavin and me. She also declared that her gift was the best and she was sure Gavin would love it. To my surprise, Gavin did not stop Meg from causing a ruckus and instead entertained all her requests. He made sure she was always by his side. When the time to sit down for dinner came, everyone took their place at the dining table. Gavin stood up to make a toast and thanked everyone for taking the time to attend his birthday celebration. He said that he had a very important announcement to make and was glad that everyone was there to witness it. Before I could react, he went down on one knee and pulled out a ring to ask me to marry him. I was overjoyed and cried happy tears before enthusiastically agreeing. Everyone cheered and gave us their congratulations. However, I noticed that Meg got up and left the table. I was confused, so I called it to Gavin's attention. Babe, your mom left the table. Is everything okay? We need to find her and get her blessings. She'll be mad if we don't. But why do we need to get her blessings? It's our decision, isn't it? Babe, you don't understand. I always talk to my mom about important decisions. We're really close, and I value her opinion. I get that she's important to you, but isn't this about us? Shouldn't we make decisions together? Of course we do, but I can't ignore her. She means a lot to me. Can we just go find her and talk to her about giving us her blessings? Immediately, I was concerned. No one should be that dependent on their parents, but I let it go because I loved him and wanted his mother to approve of me. We searched for her all over the house but couldn't find her. Eventually, we saw her sitting silently in the backyard. We approached her to ask for her blessings, which she reluctantly gave at Gavin's request. Mom, I'm sorry I didn't talk to you before proposing to Audrey. It just happened in the moment, and I thought it was the perfect time. Well, Gavin, you always discuss big decisions with me. I felt a bit left out that you didn't this time. I know, and I didn't mean for you to get upset. I had a plan to talk to you the next day, but the surprise party changed everything. I understand that it was unexpected, but you should have found a way to talk to me before making such a significant decision. You're right, Mom. I should have found a way. I just got caught up in the excitement, and Audrey has been so amazing and supportive. I wanted to show her how much she meant to me. I can see that you really love her, Gavin. I just want you to remember to include me in your life, especially when it comes to important matters. I promise, Mom. I'll work on communicating better with you. You're an essential part of my life, and I want you to be part of Audrey's and my journey together. That's all I ask for, dear. I decided I didn't need to listen to the rest of their conversation because I was beginning to feel like I was eavesdropping, even though I knew I wasn't. I turned around to walk away, and when I was just a couple of steps away, I heard her tell him how I was not good enough for her son and how he should reconsider marrying me. She also said that I was not beautiful enough and was only interested in Gavin for his money. I ignored her taunts and pretended not to have heard any of it. In the next few weeks, we began to plan our wedding. Meg never lent a helping hand in any of the preparations. She wanted to make decisions on which dress I would wear and threw a tantrum when I told her that I wanted to choose my own wedding dress. She also asked to meet me a few times to tell me that I would be expected to pay more than half of the wedding expenses, as I was lucky to be marrying Gavin and needed to contribute. I did not take any of these incidents to heart, as I assumed that she would warm up to me once we were married. Finally, after weeks of planning, my wedding day arrived. I began getting dressed in my dressing room, surrounded by my bridesmaids and my mother. Everyone told me how beautiful I looked in my flowing white dress. 
I heard a knock at the door and saw Meg walking in. To my shock, she was wearing a white wedding dress. Why are you wearing a wedding dress today? I asked. It's my son's wedding day, and it's more important to me than anything else, she replied. I get that it's an important day for you, but isn't it customary for the bride to wear white? It might take away from Audrey's moment, I suggested. Well, that's not my concern. Gavin is my only son, and I deserve attention on this occasion too, Meg insisted. Of course, Meg, but today is primarily about Audrey and Gavin's love and commitments. It's their special day, I reasoned. I know that, but I'm just making a statement. My presence here matters as much as anyone else's, Meg stated. I was furious but decided not to cause a scene and ruin the whole day. The rest of the ceremony went well, and we exchanged vows and rings. It was emotional for both of us, as we had been waiting for this day for a long time. During the planning of the wedding, I had asked Gavin to handle the guest list. I noticed that he had not included his father to be part of the guest list and asked him if he was sure about such a decision. Gabe, are you sure about not inviting your father? I inquired. He had abandoned us and has no place at such an important celebration, Gavin replied. I wanted to change his mind but decided to drop the subject as I did not want to upset him further. The next few months after our wedding passed in absolute bliss. We spent every moment together and began planning to buy our own house. Gavin and I had always wanted to live together but had decided to get married first before making such a decision. We started the process of house hunting and spent a few hours every day looking at options to purchase our dream home. One day, Gavin called me while I was at work. Hey babe, I'm sorry, but an important meeting has come up. I won't be able to go house hunting with you today, he said. No worries, darling. It happens. Don't stress about it. I can handle it on my own, I reassured him. Oh. Thanks for understanding. I'll make it up to you, I promise, Gavin replied. You better. Just focus on your meeting, and we'll catch up later. Love you, I said. Love you too, babe, Gavin replied. After work, I got into my car and began driving to the location of the property. I looked at the profile and saw that the house was on the 10th floor of a building that was still being constructed. I reached the location and met with the realtor, who informed me that another guest had arrived under our name to look at the property. Knowing that Gavin was busy, I was confused about who this person was. To my shock, my mother-in-law was at the door, waiting impatiently. Why did you come to look at the property? I asked her. I wanted to make sure that the house was good enough for my son and that it would have a place for me to stay when I visit, she replied. I did not want Meg involved but allowed her to join me to avoid making Gavin angry. We began the tour of the house, and Meg did not stop commenting about how shabby the building was and how the house was not up to her standards. By the end of the tour, I was very frustrated and wanted to leave as fast as possible. The realtor stepped away to take a call and informed us that he would show us the rest when he was back. He also warned us about being careful, as the house was under construction and could be dangerous. I began walking around and noticed an unfinished staircase outside the house. I did not notice Meg approach me and suddenly felt someone kick my right leg. I lost my balance and fell down the stairs. I could not move and felt bruises on my arms and head. I looked up to see Meg smiling in victory before she quickly turned around and left. I could not understand what had happened and could not move for a few minutes. Eventually, I found my phone in my pocket and called an ambulance, which arrived soon. On the way to the hospital, I could not stop thinking about the fact that Meg had tried to push me down the stairs to injure me. Since I met her, I had been nothing but nice to her and was sad and angry at her behavior. Once I reached the hospital, first aid was done and I had to undergo a few scans. I tried calling Gavin multiple times, but he did not pick up the phone. I somehow fell asleep because of the medication. The next morning, I tried calling Gavin again, and he picked up the phone. 
I told him about everything that had happened. Between Meg, he sounded angry and annoyed and accused me of being a liar. I can't believe you're lying about this, Audrey. You expect me to believe you fell down the stairs while being pushed by my own mother? Gavin exclaimed. I am not lying. I would never do something like that. I fell because Meg kicked me. She deliberately hurt me, I replied, trying to maintain my composure. You're just trying to cover up your actions. My own mother wouldn't hurt you for no reason, Gavin argued. She said you were being aggressive. I can't believe you're taking her word over mine. She's been manipulating you, Gavin. She pushed me down those stairs, and now she's lying to save herself. Stop it, I pleaded desperately. She would never lie to me. She's my mother. I thought you loved me and trusted me. How can you side with her even without hearing my side of the story? I cried out, feeling betrayed. I can't come to the hospital right now. Meg's in shock because of what you did, and I need to be with her, Gavin's tone was firm. You're choosing her over me, after everything we've been through? You brought this upon yourself. Maybe you deserve this for what you did, Gavin concluded coldly. Feeling devastated, I began to cry and cut the call. I did not know what to do and spent the next two days in grief and shock. Soon, my injuries began healing and I began getting my strength back. My parents came to visit me and were shocked as well at the situation and Gavin's reaction to it. My father advised me to look into Gavin's father and find out the truth of that situation, suspecting Gavin and Meg were not being honest. As per his advice, I hired a private investigator to find Gavin's father, Neil, and called him. At first, Neil was confused about who I was, but eventually, he began understanding the situation. You know, I divorced Megan and left the house because she and Gavin were using me for my money. I'm the chairman of a big company, and Gavin wanted to steal from me, Neil disclosed. I had no idea. That's terrible. I can't believe they would do something like that, I responded in shock. Yeah, it was a tough decision, but I couldn't let them take advantage of me any longer. I want you to know that those two are never up to any good, Neil warned. Thanks for telling me, Neil. I believe you, and I appreciate you looking out for me, I express my gratitude. Now, I have a plan to handle this situation. I need you to somehow get Gavin and Meg to visit you at the hospital tomorrow morning, Neil instructed. Why do you want them to come here? I asked, curious about his plan. I need to confront them about their actions and protect you from any further harm. It's time they face the consequences of their greed, Neil explained firmly. All right, I'll do my best to get them here, but please be careful. I don't want anything bad to happen to you, I cautioned. I'll handle it, Audrey. Just focus on your recovery. Tomorrow will set things right, Neil reassured me. I was skeptical and kind of afraid, truth be told. I didn't want to see either Meg or Gavin. I didn't want to see Gavin because I didn't want to look at the face of the man who does not trust his wife over his mother and is so stubborn that he didn't care enough to, at the very least, check up on her as she lay in the hospital. I don't want to see Meg because, well, for obvious reasons. I was terrified she would try to hurt me again, but I knew that if I wanted to teach them a lesson, I had to trust Neil. I called Gavin and told him that I had a special gift to give him and Meg to apologize for what I had done. I told them that I would like them to come to take it, as it was very expensive, and I wanted to make sure they got it. Here in the mention of money, Gavin and Meg readily agreed to come visit me at the hospital the following morning. The next morning, Neil arrived at the hospital with flowers. I greeted him and told him how grateful I was for his help. Just as we finished our conversation, the door opened and Gavin and Meg walked in. They both stopped at the door in shock and stared at Neil sitting on one of the chairs. Neil, what is this all about? Why are you here? Gavin questioned. I couldn't stand by and watch you and Gavin manipulate Audrey any longer, Neil calmly replied. Manipulate? We never did anything wrong. 
she is the one causing trouble, Meg interjected. That's not true. Audrey has been through a lot because of both of you. It's time to end this charade, Neil asserted. Dad, you're ruining everything. Audrey and I love each other, Gavin protested. I divorced your mother because of your actions. You were trying to take advantage of me and my company. I was just trying to secure my future, Neil explained. Dad, you never supported me. You know that. I wouldn't have given you anything you asked for, yet you still went behind my back and tried to transform my company in your name. I don't want Audrey to face the same thing, Neil declared, handing Gavin some papers. What are these? Gavin asked. Divorce papers, Gavin, so Audrey can finally be free from the toxic influence of both of you, Neil revealed. How can you do this to us? It's the right thing to do. Audrey deserves better than this, Neil replied sternly. And that's not all, Neil continued. Meg snatched the paper from Gavin and screamed. The paper announced that the $40 million inheritance, which was supposed to go to Gavin, would now go to me. Both Meg and Gavin's jaws dropped. They began loudly arguing with Neil before resorting to begging him to change his mind. Neil told them that they deserved this for trying to hurt someone innocent like me and that they were reaping the fruits of their actions. He then called the hospital security to remove both Meg and Gavin from the room and they were dragged out. I had gone through hell, but I finally got my revenge and continued to have a good friendship with Neil thereafter. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.